so uh, we, we're here with Jim Campbell. We were going to do this outside, but it's hot. So this office is nice and air-conditioned. And I'm, I'm a bit of a prima donna now, so I don't really like to get too hot, too cold. You know, you guys are working outside all day. This is nothing for you, right? Well, I did notice you set up camp here uh, when I came in, so you were all ready to go uh, in here. I was here. all ready, yeah. Uh, so first question everybody wants to know, uh, did you get – you won the $500,000 Earl Beal, right, with yes. Crystal Fashion. Did you get the check yet? Yes. 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 Cash a check? Uh, today. Today, okay, okay. Oh, oh, oh. So, I mean, what's, what's the plan? I'm sure there'll be something that'll come up that will be gone before I know it. Is it? Are, 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 is there a big party at Magic Lakers Farm, or uh, is that going towards other stakes payments and other horse buying? Like I said, there'll be something come up. That'll something be, come up. It'll be gone before I know it. Uh, well, you're married for a lot of years, right? So 24, 24 years in November. You probably aren't even going to see any of that money, right? She handles all of it, and, and no, my, I got to give her credit. She's uh, she watches everything and. Uh, she, there's no wasteful spending on her part. Does she pin like a twenty dollar bill to your chest or your collar and say, "Here, Jim, there's your allowance for the day"? And no, she's not like that <laughs> she, at all. She lets you spend a little bit. Uh, she's well. We've been together for twenty four years, and it seems like it's been two years. So two years. Okay, it's good, good, good. So uh, I, I mean, are are you a, a saver? Or a, when, when's the last time you you splurged on something? Splurged on something? Yeah. Uh, like like real? I mean, how old are you? I'm 56. 56. So you probably a little bit more consistent, mellow. When you were 25 years ago, was there was there some splurge, uh, splurging going on? Did you get some sweet rims on one of your cars or? Oh, I did that back. You did that back then. Okay. Year, back in the mid mid 80s okay. when uh, cell phones were first coming out in cars. Oh, and, you had the cell phone in the car. That and, was and the. Uh, when CDs were first coming out, I had the uh, equalizer in the back, and okay, hey, so you were you were bumping and then booming down. Yeah, yeah. Is that is that how you 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 picked up your wife? How would you guys meet? Uh, we actually met at the Meadowlands. Her father was a trainer. Okay. Um, and we met at met at the Meadowlands, and uh, and then th her father had a farm that he trained his horses on, and uh, so we we probably dated for four years before we got married okay now let me get this right i'm trying to do the math in my head married 24 years what's your anniversary quick november 13th good job good job man he's he's trained she's got him trained 24 years that would be 1994 correct correct so your date so so she was with you when you won the hamiltonian in 95 yes she was Okay, so so that must have been like that first year. I mean, that's she must have thought she married, like like the greatest trainer in the world. She married one year, boom, you won the Hamiltonian. Yeah, was, was was that the definitive difference of your training years before to leading up to that? Is I got married and then I won the Hamiltonian. Well, getting married was the best part of my life, uh, next to having my our son. Um, but you know, winning the Hamiltonian, if you're if you're training horses, it's it's the ultimate race to win. There's no other race like it. Now, was it fret like uh, was it a year uh, bef a full year and a half before? Or was it only like November, August? What was that? Was it year only year and a half? Uh, so a full year and a half. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you didn't win the next Hamiltonian, like like the year. Uh yeah well yeah the, the next one you got married and then the next Hamilton oh oh okay so you did yeah. okay so that I mean she must have thought yeah that that was the definitive change then right well like I said you know you win that race there's no other race like it uh it was Tagliabue right correct so what uh what can you use from that and from what I've seen you haven't been resting on that for the last 20 years. Like you didn't just say, hey, I won the Hamiltonian in 95 and that's it. I, I don't have to win anything else from now on. You've been winning big races and been in big races for the last 20, that's fair to say, right? I've been in big races for, for over 30 Long years. Long time, yeah. yeah. But I mean, you know, some people, they they you know they win the Hamiltonian and that's it. I, I don't get to train anymore. I, got, I could just, I don't well, have you, to win big races. I, I won the Hamiltonian, that's well, it. You, you don't make that much money to, no, <laughs> to no, have okay. that attitude. Uh, so learn is it totally different in training and style and attitude and partners than it was 25 years ago? 
Yeah, you know, the business is more, it's, there's less people in it. And, you know, with modern day technology, um, everybody is, is on top of the top of everything. Um, you know, I think, I think in today's, today's game, just because, you know, there's, there's less people in it, but the, the people that are in it are, you know, they're serious players. Mm -hmm. Um, whereas probably 20, 25 years ago, there was, there was more, more of a variety of different people that were in the game then. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, bigger achievement, winning the Hamiltonian in 95 or having this consistently long career for 30 years. What's, what's more important to you? Can you look back at one achievement or say, no, no. Like every year we're at it. We're we're doing something. We're in stakes championships. We're in the we win the Earl Beal. We're gonna be entering the Hambo. What's more important, uh, or can you still not even look back because you're still in it? Well, I'm still in it. Um, you, you know, if I look back, there's so many different races that meant a lot to me at the, at the time. Um, you know, if you ask me to say is the is the Hamiltonian the the best race you ever won, I would. With hesitation, because there's other races that I've won at that particular time in my career, they they meant as much to me as winning the Hamiltonian. You mean being like a young trainer? Being a young trainer, or you know, uh, you know, you do this long enough, you go through some dry spells. Sure. And then when you have a horse pop up and win a, you know, a big stake race for you, or a horse go out and you know win several big stake races for you when you've had a dry spell. Well, at that time, those races meant just as much to you as winning the Hamiltonian, for example. And the Hamiltonian, uh, you know, the year before winning that, you know, I was down to five horses training. Okay. And it was in August of 94 when uh, Jules and Arlene Siegel asked me if I wanted to train their horses. And uh, and I and I accepted, and Taglaboo happened to be one of the horses that was in the barn. He was a two-year-old then. And you know, I trained him, trained him one time, and he was just kind of big and needed some time mm -hmm. off, and he just got turned out. Had no idea that the horse that I was turning out was going to come back to win the Hamiltonian. When uh, when did you get an idea of training him down? Like, was there a certain maybe in May, maybe in March or whatever that you're like, this is pretty, this is a pretty nice horse. Well, train he, he he also didn't really fully. Uh, he didn't like I, I, I did a, a thing with John and from what I remember even he was like yeah he was okay but I don't think he really won much or, or he was just starting to come into his own peaking right in August right well when we really knew something was with him was the first day we qualified him um, you know I had trained him trained him in probably around two 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 minutes at gateway we were there at the time and you know he did it did it easy enough and uh, his first qualifier John got off the bike and he goes take good care of this one he says this one's a top one I was like really he goes he's got serious speed to him and he goes he's he's gonna be a good one now was it at that moment that he showed the speed or John knew he's gonna progress into something both he saw speed in him, and he knew he was going to progress. He wasn't there yet, but he just he, he needed his experience and time to time to progress, right? Yeah, John told John's told me over the years on maybe five or six horses that their very first time he's sat behind them, he's gotten off them, and said this one's going to be a good one, and he was dead on on all probably six of them. All right, how many times he said that to every trainer? No, you you think he's. Or, well, he said it six times he said, to me. Oh, he okay. Was, he, he said it a, six times to you. Okay. Okay. And he was a hunt. He's batting a hundred percent. Okay, with you. With me. With you. Yep. A hundred percent. Was there? Is there always been? Um, uh, has he been harder on you or more critical of you, strictly from the business standpoint when he drives for you? Like, Jim, what are you doing with it? Like, uh, he, uh, a bad horse, Jim. Come on. Can he be more truthful with you? Or? Oh, absolutely. It's yeah. not. I wouldn't say label it as being harder on me. He. He knows, well, we had the relationship. I don't think we ever argued over one horse mm -hmm. in all the years that we trained trained horses. And, uh, you know, we, we would have disagreements, but it would be like, well, I think it should be this. And it would be like, all right, give that a try. Or if it doesn't work, then try it my way. And it was never like... There was never I told you so's or anything like no, that. Nothing. You, yeah, I mean... No. We just... 
we just we had a great relationship you know when uh when we would be racing horses and uh you know he did have a very good opinion like i said six six out of six he told me uh, that we're going to be good horses um you know i paid attention to what he said i think he was ahead of his time uh you know knowing knowing horses knowing how at high speed, how they should be geared up and stuff like sure. that, and there was nobody better than him. He was he was by far the best at seeing. Like you can take a horse out, you can train him in two ten, you can train him in two minutes, you can train him wherever you want. When they got to start going, you know, back then fifty five, fifty four, fifty three, um, things changed. There's and a clear difference. There's yes. a clear difference in in he was ahead of everybody else of spotting you know what changes to make and knowing what would help a horse go in high speed now that he's not driving anymore uh is do you you have to develop um, and even when he was driving you had all different drivers it's just the nature of the game uh do you try to develop a specific relationship with a type of driver uh and say okay i know that guy's better with trotters or young horses or older horses or are they all really good now and you don't really well, care? Well, yeah, I care. Um, I guess I'm probably still a little, little old-fashioned because, you know, first thing I want to know, are they on any lines? How was their gait? Stuff like that, whether they win, lose, or draw. But for the most part, um, you know, David Miller and uh, Tim Tietrich drive hey, most, I... most of our horses. And they're, they're, they're both horsemen, too. You know, they both trained horses when they were younger and... Um, you know they, they they know how a horse you know should be geared up going going high speed and stuff like that, and uh, you know and and some of some of the times like a, of a younger driver Marcus Miller, um, is is excellent. You know he's just they got a good good feel of what a horse should be like and and uh, you know he grew up with his dad training horses his whole time and. Uh, you know, Marcus is, he, he does a, t a terrific job. So you like, uh, but, but you know, drivers who you may not necessarily get along with long-term, like they, they, everybody can go out and drive, but I'm talking about long-term. Hey, I want you to drive this horse and coach them along. It's a little bit different with an older horse cause they kind of know what they're doing, right? Yeah. It's different with an older one because you're basically the way they are today, you, you know, you just gearing them up and you know, whatever the speed they go today, whatever happens in the race happens. Um, but you know, there's, there's some drivers that, that I don't use that I, I think they're, they're good, good at what they do too. Mm -hmm. It just, uh, for, it's just kind of the way it works out for us that, uh, you know, David and, and Timmy, they, they're the ones that are baby racing most of our two year olds. Sure. Um, and, and I'd add Andy McCarthy to the list too. You know, he's, he's got a good, good feel of the way a horse should be. And, you know these guys that are starting our young horses. You know that's that's important to have. So you uh, you like the development. You still have mostly two and three year old, right? Yes. Uh, uh, how many two year olds? A bunch. Uh, we we had eighteen. We got fourteen mm -hmm. that we're going with right now. Which is like seventy percent of your barn, right? Yep. So the three year olds you got, they're all pretty good. Like you know. Well, yeah, yeah. We've been fortunate. You know, we got some some real nice trotting colts uh, to work with this year, and. Um, and I got another Payson filly, uh, three-year-old Payson filly, Alexis Power. That's uh, she's had a really good start through the year. As much as I want to talk about Alexis Power, I know you like the Phillies. This is Hambo. We ain't got time for that. She is she gonna race on Hambo Day? Yes. What uh what rate what race is that? Shady Daisy. Okay, Shady Daisy. Uh, so maybe if you win the the Shady Daisy, then we'll do we'll we'll just dedicate to Alexis Power. Is that fair? Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh. Do you last wasn't last year you you just go back and forth this year I want to focus on the Hamiltonian last year I want to focus on the Oaks and then you had Broadway Donna right and a couple two years ago with, two two years ago okay two years ago I'm getting Donna. old I can't remember every you know uh, do you like do you like trotting Phillies or do you like trotting Colts more whichever ones are can go fast I like okay it, it's not. It's not that you say, "Oh, I'm going to have trotting colts this year." It's you, you know, you're dealt. You don't. With, I thought that's what you guys did. You just say, "I'm going <laughs> to." No, you just uh, you you deal with the hand that you're dealt, and uh, you know, some year you might be stronger in trotting fillies. Some years you might be stronger in in trotting colts. Um, you just you just never know. As far as a bias towards either one, I I, I just like I like training the trotters. I I like actually training them. 
uh, more than, than I like training the, the Pacers. Um, not that I don't dislike the Pacers, but if you gave me a choice, I'd take a trotter over a Pacer. Uh, so you, you mostly, probably very few you buy at two or three, right? You basically get these as a yearling and kind of nurture them and, and get them. That's, fair, that's fair to say? They're all bought as, as yearlings. Right, but you don't like, how many have you bought midway through their two-year-old career and said it's been a long time right so so you're time. you're getting them from the beginning when you're at the sale is there uh maybe a specific year or a specific sire that you're saying yeah i may end up with more trotting fillies like which is easier to make money with trotting fillies because of the post career whereas a trotting cult it's like man if i don't get a sire and a good one is it tough to maybe they turn into an older racehorse is that something that you factor in when buying all that no i'm we're we're when uh jules and i are at the sales you know we're looking we're looking for the for next for a two-year-old that's what we're just race horses yep okay. to make a stakes horse out of, out of a two-year-old okay you know whatever whatever happens after that then you know then then we deal with it but strictly looking for something that uh looks like they can race it too and uh and strictly for racing because you can't you can't go make bold plans on a horse that's never raced before you know they if you're going to be thinking of after after racing well you got to do a lot before there's sure. any value to that sure.